Okay, let's talk about drugs that can deplete inositol. We've got lithium, typically used to treat depression. Seizure medicines, oftentimes used to treat diseases like epilepsy, and then antibiotics, which are rampantly used. Um, you get antibiotics not only through, um, you know, through prescription medications, but you can get them through food. You can get them through um, a variety of different sources, um, like water contamination, as well as chlorine and bromine that are used to treat water act as antibiotics. So a lot of places we can get antibiotics commonly in the diet. There's also some research that has shown that coffee or the caffeine in coffee, and they're not, not real sure, so I don't, I don't want to go too deep in this, but coffee consumption uh, increasing the risk of inositol deficiency. These studies were carried out in, uh, in pregnant women. Um, so be cautious here. I would just say be cautious. Um, there's nothing super solid there, but this comes back to, you know, one cup of coffee a day, you'd probably be okay, but you start going up over that amount, you know, you get it, you start getting in trouble for more than one reason. This could be possibly one of those reasons. So keep that in mind with inositol. Well, let's talk about how to take it. There are different forms of inositol. You've got Myo-inositol, which in my opinion is probably the best way to get it in. Um, Myo-inositol is the way that you, is what your body is actually going to do with inositol anyway. You're just going to convert it into myo-inositol. And so this is the most abundant form in your body. You've got um, IP6 which is oftentimes used as a supplement. And this is an effect, this is also an effective supplement. But um, I prefer in the clinic, I prefer the use of myo-inositol in terms of outcomes. And then you have chiro-inositol. Um, which I don't typically recommend using supplementally over either of these two. So you know, this one gets you know, gets the award for, in my opinion, the best. It's the one that your body will actually be producing from these others anyway. So using this one, in my opinion, is your priority if you're looking for types of inositol to use. As far as dosing is concerned, um, your body produces anywhere from one, uh, one to four grams a day. So you make this already. The typical diet contains, if you eat, you know, said, fruits and vegetables and, and meats, uh, contains about one gram a day of inositol. Um, there's some speculation, although I don't think any research has been done to prove this wrong or right, that if you are not eating plant-based foods that contain some of the phytates, which is where the inositol lives predominantly, so if you are on a low phytate style diet that you might not be getting adequate inositol in your diet. So there is some, at least some theoretical cause for concern that if you're, you know, like on a carnivore diet or a high meat diet, low plant diet, that you might not be getting enough inositol. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're looking to supplement, generally we know the body produces this amount or, or consumes this amount. The average person consumes that amount in a given day. So it's a good, it's a good safe estimate that if you are on a specialized type of diet, you know, upwards of one gram a day, just if you're talking about kind of maintenance supplementation. Now, if you want to go more aggressive, more aggressive doses are really between two and four grams per day for most conditions. Uh, and this is if you're, you know, again, going back to what we were talking about with thyroid problems or with uh, PCOS or with infertility or gestational diabetes, these would be kind of the ranges that you'd wanna to try to hit if you're trying to support yourself with inositol. And then for the anxiety, the depression, the neurological issues, those studies go you know, pretty high, 18 grams a day to, to have that kind of an impact. So in this regard, you, know, you can get two to four grams pretty easy in capsules or pills uh, gel caps are going to be absorbed about 30% better. So if you're using gel caps, uh, it's definitely a better option. Whereas um, if you're using like a powder or granulated powder, um, the absorption is going to be a little less. But uh, again, 18 grams a day for, for um, 
depression or anxiety. So higher doses there, you might want to get it in a powder form or a bulk form if you're trying to experiment in that regard. Either way, if you're going to use it, if you're using it for those different types of medical situations, it's always a good idea to get with your doctor. But in my opinion too, it's always a good idea to test and not guess. So if you really want to use inositol, I mean, you, it's safe enough if you're staying around these numbers here. It's not really going to do any harm, but except for maybe harming your pocketbook if, if you're spending money on it and you don't need it. But this is where testing can become very valuable. And so intracellular testing is what I recommend if you're trying to assess your levels of inositol and whether or not supplementation might be a good idea for you. I test this level in everyone who walks through the door of my practice. And I can just say from experience, you know, we see inositol deficiencies on a very regular basis. You know, I would guesstimate somewhere between 15 and 25% of people that we see will come back with low levels of inositol and, uh, and we'll put them on supplementation regimen and make sure they have foods that they're eating higher quantities or enough quantities through their diet as well. So that's it on inositol. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Make sure you check out some of my other crash courses here on vitamins and minerals and we'll see you in the next episode.